Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the deciduous mandibular first molar. So what we are going to discuss in this video lecture, we are going to discuss the timeline of development of the deciduous mandibular first molar. We will discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems. And we will discuss the key identification features of the deciduous mandibular first molar. So watch this lecture till the end. So the timeline of development of this tooth. So the mandibular for deciduous first molar, it, the first evidence of calcification or the calcification of this tooth begins around the age of 15 and a half weeks in utero. The crown it is completed by the age of five and a half months after birth. The tooth emerge into the oral cavity around the age of 16 months and the root it is completed when the baby is two and a half years old. This tooth it is lost around the age of 10 years and around this age this tooth it is replaced by the mandibular first premolar. What is the alphabet that is used for this tooth? So the alphabets that begin from the maxillary second molar of the right side and in a clockwise manner. They continue. The alphabet that is used for the left mandibular first molar is L and in a clockwise direction alphabets they continue and the alphabet is S. Now, in the Palmer notation system, the alphabets for both the right and the left mandibular first molar is the same. So, the alphabet, the alphabet D is used for both the left and the right mandibular first molar. The only difference is this symbol. This symbol, it indicates that this is a tooth of the mandibular arch and it is of the left side and this symbol it indicates that it is a tooth of the mandibular arch of the right side. In the FDI notation system which is also called as two digit system so for the right mandibular first deciduous first molar the al the, al the number is 84 here the 4 is the tooth number well, the 8, it indicates that it is a mandibular right quadrant. Similarly, on the left side, the number is 7, 4. Here, the 4 is the tooth number. While the 7, it indicates that it is the tooth of the mandibular arch of the left quadrant. So, 7, 4 for the left mandibular first molar and 8, 4 for the mandibular right deciduous first molar. Now let's discuss the key identification features or the key features of this tooth from the buccal aspect. The mesial outline of the crown it is almost straight so this is the mesial outline of the crown which is relatively straight while the distal outline below the contact area it converge towards the cervical portion of the crown. So there is convergence from the contact area to the cervical area of the crown on, on the distal side. This is the distal portion of the crown. So the height of the distal portion, it is shorter as compared to the mesial portion of the crown, which is a bit higher. There are two cusps. This cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp and this is the distobuccal cusp. So the mesial cusp, it is slightly larger and higher as compared to the distobuccal cusp, which is rounded and slightly smaller. A, a slight developmental depression, it is present between these two cusps over here. So a developmental depression is there in between the mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusp. Now the roots of this tooth. So there are two total in total there are two roots. 
this is the mesial root of the tooth and this is the distal root with a very small root trunk so a very small root trunk there's a bifurcation this is the mesial root and this is the distal root so the roots are long and they are cylinder as compared to the length of the crown in the apical third portion so this is the apical third portion of the root so in the apical third portion of the roots the roots they spread uh, beyond the uh, beyond the crown outline so in fact they spread beyond the crown outline in the apical third portion especially the distal you can observe the distal root now from the lingual aspect so from the lingual aspect the crown and the root they converge towards the lingual side so the crown and the root they converge towards the lingual side especially the mesial portion it converges more towards the lingual side now there are two also two cusps on the lingual side so this is the mesial lingual cusp which is long and sharp well, the distolingual cusp, it is small and rounded. So, as I already told you, the distolingual cusp, it is rounded. From the lingual side, you can see part of the buccal, two buccal cusp, mesiobuccal and the distobuccal cusp. You can observe these two cusps from the, from the lingual aspect as well. This is a cervical line and the cervical line, it is nearly straight from mesial to the distal side. So from the mesial aspect, there is extreme curvature or bulge on the buccal side in the cervical third portion of the crown. So this is the cervical third portion of the crown and there's this extreme curvature or bulge. The two cusps, they are visible from this aspect. This is the mesiobuccal cusp and this is the mesiolingual cusp. Now, the outlines of the crown, the lingual outline of the crown, it extends beyond the, um, beyond the root base. So, it extends beyond the root base. So, it is uh, slightly outside. Well, the cusp tip, but well, the buccal cusp tip is and the buccal outline is nearly in line with the root outline. This is the mesial marginal ridge that is connecting the buccal mesiobuccal cusp with the mesial lingual cusp. So this is the mesial marginal ridge which is well developed. The root it is the mesial root it is broad buccolingually and it has a square kind of outline. Sometimes a developmental depression is present over here on the root surface. Sometimes a developmental depression is present uh, on the full length of the root. So from the distal aspect, the cervical line, it is nearly straight. But from buccolingually, it is nearly straight. The distal buccal this is the distal buccal cusp and this is the distal lingual cusp so these cusps they are not as long as sharp so a part of the mesial cusp are sometimes visible from the from the distal aspect similarly uh, the distal marginal ridge you can see this ridge that is connecting the distal buccal cusp with the distal lingual cusp so this marginal ridge is also not very well developed. This is the distal root and you can see the distal root it is more rounded rather than a square in shape. It is more rounded and it is also shorter buccolingually especially in the apical third portion. And due to this, the part of the mesial root, it is visible from the distal aspect. The occlusal surface of the mandibular deciduous first molar, it has an irregular outline. So it is a regular outline and you can see up, this is the buccal aspect of the crown. 
and you can see a prominence that is present over here in the mesiobuccal region. So there's a prominence present on the crown surface that is on the mesio in the mesiobuccal region. This is the mesiolingual cusp and it is the largest and the best developed cusp among the other cusps. The other cusps, this is the mesiobuccal cusp, this is the distobuccal cusp, and this is the distolingual cusp. This is the central developmental groove that extends from the pit of the mesial triangular fossa. So it begins over here and it crosses the tooth surface and it ends in the in, uh, in the pit of the distal triangular fossa. So this is the central developmental groove. There are numerous supplementary grooves that emerge from the central developmental groove. So there are various supplementary grooves as well. Apart from, uh, there are some main grooves as well, such as buccal developmental groove. And over here, there's another groove that is called lingual developmental groove. There are two fossa. So one fossa is here that is called mesial triangular fossa. Triangular depression is here. This is the mesial triangular fossa and this is the distal triangular fossa. So the mesial triangular fossa, it is more well developed as compared to the distal triangular fossa which is small and less developed. So this is all about uh, the main features of the deciduous mandibular first molar. Uh, thank you very much for watching this lecture. If you have any suggestion, any comment or feedback, do write in the comments below. Do subscribe to our channel and visit our Instagram account, uh, Dental Edu Hub, for customs images and flashcards. Thank you again and stay blessed.